I'm competing with some of these people early in the early in the process, and so I don't. And I and I know that's not good of me. I should support all houndsmen, and I do, but it's just not fun for me. You know, I don't want to go to a local UKC hunt and spend fifteen dollars to hunt against two dogs that that aren't any good. And you're going to run into that. These dogs, those dogs aren't very good at these some of these smaller hunts, and sometimes they are, but not here. And so, I don't get anything out of it. And it, it, I'm a busy guy, and so when I do go to a coon hunt, I want it to be against the best of the best, and that's when I go, and and that's when I want to compete. And so I don't, I haven't competed much against in UKC. Now that said, I hope everybody does. Um, UKC Trevor and Alan are great guys, and it's a great organization, and they they have the best rules format. And you know, maybe my dogs aren't good enough to get to the level that I can be in the finals of the tournament of champions or something like that. And so maybe that's why I don't do it. I don't know, but it's just it's just a different style of hunting. It's a different style of hunter, and it's just not something that has ever appealed to me here in the last decade or so. And you know, you hear that a lot. People say. Well, he's a PKC guy coming to the UKC hunts. Or look at this UKC guy coming to the PKC hunts. You know what I mean? Yep. yep. And I really wish there wasn't that divide. I mean, around here, especially the local clubs, it's usually the same club holds PKC and UKC hunts. But right, you right. still, you get different people show up for the UKC hunts that don't show up for the PKC hunts. Most of the time, the people that show up for the PKC hunts still show up for the UKC hunts. But yeah, where the real divide comes is, when it comes from the UKC guys not showing up to the PKC hunts or whatever, you know what I mean? I just, I hate to see that. You know, like you said, we should support all houndsmen and registries. Yeah, and I do too. And I'm just as guilty of it as the guys that won't show up at the PKC hunts that hunt the UKC side. You know, I should be there and I should be supporting the local club. Um, sometimes I'll guide for them. Uh, sometimes if they have a bigger event, you know, I'll try to go to it and, you know, there's nothing wrong with only hunting PKC or UKC, I don't guess. But I, the only problem I get is when, and I've been guilty of this in the past too, and I'm really trying to fix that, is that I shouldn't talk down on guys that only hunt UKC, and the UKC guys shouldn't talk down on the guys that only hunt for money. I mean, we should, we're all one big happy family, or we're supposed to be. And there's a lot of jealousy in the sport and a lot of misunderstandings, I think. You know, a lot of these guys don't understand that, guys like me and and jed and and dustin weed and and ward and doherty and all these guys came from just super humble beginnings we're not just rich guys out here spending crazy money on dogs and entry fees that's not where we started you know and so i don't know i know there's a divide and there's a divide between pkc and ukc and i'm just as guilty of it as some uh, as far as the uh the entering in the hunts and the participation but we we got to quit running each other down for sure yeah, and and I agree one hundred percent. You know, UKC has really, really stepped up. I'm mm-hmm. not sitting here tooting their horn or anything, but I mean, they've really answered the call, in my opinion. Yeah. And that's why I give them credit. I was watching their coverage of the of the UKC World Hunt last year. You know, they're on the YouTube Live and they're doing commentary and they've done all this and they've changed the rules and they've they've done so much. Oh my gosh, Allen has done great and Trevor have done great. And they came up with this Tournament of Champions format, and they've got guys like my brother, who's normally a PKC hunter driving all the way to Arkansas to go to a doubleheader so he can get his wins. You know, it's just, they've done, they're doing great. And I'm super happy for them and proud of them. And I love that that guys are skipping registries. And I wish, and I don't want to run Roger Dale and the people at PKC down because that's, that's not what I'm about. I like them. They're great people. But I wish they would put forth that same effort, you know, that you, that Allen is. I really do. I mean, it just seems like they've kind of stagnated. And so I don't want one registry, or I could have 10. It wouldn't matter to me as long as there's somewhere for everybody to go. But, you know, these, these registries got to put forth a lot of effort to help us, you know, that we're the consumer. And so, uh, I like you said, kudos to UKC for doing it because they've done great. They really have. I feel like PKC has an opportunity. They could do like a podcast, man. If a registry yep. would do like Pro Hound podcast, yeah, I think it'd be awesome. You know, they did away with the magazine, do a Pro Hound podcast. You know what I mean? Or or something you like that. Started on the magazine. 
yeah. and what they've done. I've wanted to be on the cover of that Pro Hound all my life, but I won't be able to get that chance. I've never been on the cover. But I don't know. And it's not that we don't like them. It's not that we don't like Roger Dale personally or we don't like, you know, anybody, Shane or any Jerry Mauld, you know, even though he's retired now. We don't. It's not like that. It's just that when I look at it, they could do so much more. And it's just like they refuse to. And there's no sense in... Any business, if it isn't growing, then it's declining. Yeah. And, you know, and, and people talk about coon hunting as a dying sport and coon hunting. Is, it's not. It is booming. Yeah. I mean, this is the golden age of raccoon hunting. We've got the, the youth world championship in PKC was a new record this year. More kids than ever. These are the youth. And they've got such an opportunity to get bigger to get more members, to branch out, to do things like this, and they don't even freaking try. And it just makes me want to puke. And so kudos to Alan and Trevor and all the guys at UKC that, that are expanding. You know, PKC needs to follow suit and do better. And I, me and Jed had talked about this on The Truth. And, you know, we're not, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They don't do enough, not nearly enough. And, and we could be growing right now instead of declining. Coonhunting University is brought to you by Superior Light Company. Use coupon code CHU Podcast at checkout at nighthunters.com. If you're in the market for a new light, do not overlook Superior. They make the best light in the business. The Hellcat Max Flat Dark Earth Edition is awesome. Come standard with the new and improved high intensity green laser. Come standard with the newest design and dual walking light modules, offering the brightest walking lights currently available on the market, bar none. And it comes with your choice of red or true amber or double red color module technology. The Hellcat Max new module design reduces weight without sacrificing burn time or brightness, resulting in an overall weight of just 20 to 24 ounces, depending on your cap selection. The Hellcat Max offers the newest battery technology, which allows for five hours of continuous main beam burn time on the highest setting and over 10 hours of highest auxiliary light settings. All controls can be found on one easy nine positions click switch and all superior lights come with a two-year warranty are made right here in the usa so check out superior lights use coupon code chu podcast at checkout at nighthunters.com thank you to mr jamie mr sam at superior lights for supporting coonan university podcast and making this podcast possible so i ask all the listeners if you could please go over there and support superior lights Use the exclusive discount code that is only available to Coonhunting University podcast listeners, CHU Podcast. Superior, step up to the max. Now, back to the show. Yeah, and like when you watch the Tournament of Champions coverage by UKC, and if somebody's just flipping through YouTube and they flip on and see that, I mean, that looks so professional. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it looks like you're watching ESPN or something, you know? Yes, it was fantastic. I didn't get to watch enough of it, but yeah, it was great. I mean, and we could do that. I mean, we're not we're not idiots. I mean, there's yeah. some smart coon hunters out there. Even if you don't know how to do it, hire somebody that does and and get out cuz it's it's we could mainstream hunting with hounds. Exactly. And, exactly. And this is the way to do it. No animals are harmed. You know, these coons aren't killed, so there's no huge animal rights activist issues. There's no none of that, which I mean, I don't care about that, but I mean, you look at Coon hunting. We're, we hunted for. There's three guys that won twenty thousand dollars a piece this week at La Plata. And they they split the finals. They won twenty grand a piece. Congrats to Jake and uh, Rusty and Steve Ant, by the way. But uh, PKC didn't have anybody even there to help with the hunt. I mean, it was a huge hunt in La Plata, Missouri, the greatest coon hunting you know spot in the world, and there's nobody even there to help support it, let alone go live or to do a live play-by-play or anything i mean there was there was no media coverage there was the next morning at like 10 o'clock they'd post the results on program and that was it it's, I, mean, I mean it's disgusting i feel your pain you know and and i think when people say that coon hunting's dying and i've said this before it's like it's weird because like you said mm-hmm. in one way it is booming and but what's dying is the traditional ways and we have to break that chain and get that out of our mind because in order to survive, we're going to have to be able to adapt. 
to yeah. the new world. You know? Yeah. There's, there's no wrong way to legally coon hunt. You yeah. know, if I'm a competition guy that won't turn a dog loose for less than a $6,500 entry, that's fine. That's fine. If I'm a, if I'm a, got an old walker dog tied in the back that only hunts for two minutes during coon season and has to see an eyeball in every single tree or it's no good, that's fine too. Yeah. You're you know, right. let's not, let's not, you know, argue amongst ourselves about the right way to coon hunt. There is no right way. There's no wrong way. There's just, there's just houndsmen. There's people that like their dogs and they like the sport. And then there's everybody else. It shouldn't be factioned and it shouldn't be, you know, you see these guys on social media that are, Oh, and I'm, you know, the only way to coon hunt is this, and these guys are ruining the sport, and that's not how you do it, and and there's no wrong way to do it. You no, know, there's no wrong way. You just do what what makes you happy and, and enjoy the sport and support the sport, and then let the else let everything else just fall where it may. Yeah, and like you said, as long as you're doing it ethical, you know, yeah, there's exactly. no wrong way to do it. And there's no right you way to do it. Care, you take good care of your dogs. You enjoy the sport. You you can be a hide hunter. You can be a guy that loves to see 10 dogs under one tree. You can be a guy that, that hunts 70 hours a week. And, and if his dog ain't a dead loner, then, you know, he don't want it. And he's going to sell it for a hundred thousand dollars. Either one's fine. Those are all great. You know, keep it up, do what makes you happy. And, uh, you know, quit running down people that, that do it differently. Cause that doesn't make any sense and it doesn't help anybody. Yeah. And, you hit the nail on the head, but that's a good answer. Good job. Thanks. But so you speak a lot of truth, obviously, from <laughs> what we just heard. I mean, you know, <laughs> how'd you come about doing the truth podcast? I mean, you were well known before that, but yeah, the the truth podcast really has blown up. I mean, Houndsman XP, it, of course, was a huge podcast, yeah. but you know, it was luck. I mean, uh, when I had big show game calls and I was making squalors and, and I was doing more YouTube stuff and things like that, uh, Chris Powell, who's a great guy and a great friend and a, and a mentor as far as the podcasting stuff goes, uh, allowed me to be a guest on Houndsman XP. And then that kind of turned into a recurring role, you know, where I had been on two or three times and, and, you know, I was kind of starting to be part of the team and, uh, you know, I was just sitting here over a glass of bourbon one night and thinking, you know, and what had happened was I had listened to another hound hunting podcast and a man was on there talk. He, he was a man that raised a uh, running dog, a coyote hounds, fox hound. And he was talking about how competition coon hunting had ruined uh, coon dogs. And I was so frustrated and mad. And there, there's nothing farther from the truth. And I contacted Chris after I'd heard it. And I said, hey, I want to get out there and, and you know, put out what, what it's really like. You know, because these people don't understand that. That guy hadn't been to a competition hunt in his life. You know, he was probably just rambling on about something he read on Facebook or something. You know, I don't tell that guy how to, how to run his foxhounds or breed his coyote dogs because I don't know nothing about it. And so I was half angry <laughs> and I had contacted Chris and said, we need to do something about that. And Chris said, you know, how about you just get your own segment? We'll call it the truth and you, you let the truth come out. And so that's kind of how it happened. Thanks to Chris at Houndsman XP and these guys for giving me that platform. I, I really appreciate it, but it was really spurred on by just me wanting to get that out there because it's, it's what people say sometimes is so far from the truth that I wanted to actually speak the truth yeah and that's awesome i never you know yet never said that on the podcast as to why you did it but that that's pretty cool yeah. and that's a good reason too yeah so what does it mean to you to be able to draw attention to the sport of coon hunting through that platform of the truth i want to draw attention to and it's selfish of me i understand it's selfish of me but i want to draw attention to the people that that enjoy the sport the way I do. You know, I get guys that say, why don't you just go talk to a pup trainer or why don't you go talk? And we will someday, I'm sure. But my little niche, my little section of the sport that I enjoy are 
competing against world-class hounds and world-class handlers and that's what i like talking to and about and with and things like that and so when you look at you know i want to draw positive attention yes but i also want people to see what i'm seeing and i that's that's a selfish way to look at things you know i realize that but still these guys are these guys are such good houndsmen and I've trained a lot of dogs. I've done protection dog, or I'm working on a protection dog. I've done retrievers. I've done pointing dogs. I've done beagles. I've done stock dogs. And nothing is harder to train and finish and get right than a competition coon hound. I don't care what anybody says. Bear dogs, lion dogs, as far as hounds goes, beagles, whatever. It is harder to get a dog to win consistently at the highest level than it is to get anything. And so that's a mountain that I always wanted to climb. And then I want people to see that the way I see it, which, like I said, I realize that's selfish, but that's why we're doing it. And I, I just want to, I just want to expose it. I don't think that's selfish at all. I mean, I think that you're still drawing a positive attention to coon hunting to that. And, and you're, you're reflecting that light on that side of coon hunting, you know? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I see that, but I also, you know, I don't want to be negative towards other S sections of it. And I don't want to ignore other sections, but I feel like that's being represented elsewhere. You know, uh, Chris does a regu- a great job on the Houndsman XP on the regular portion, on the Monday portion of the podcast. Guys like you that are doing your podcast and stuff like that, that, that are sometimes doing, you know, you've done Tom Hopkins and you've done guys like that that have competition hunted a lot, but they're also the breeders and, and trainers and stuff like that. So I feel like that's already out there. You know, so which is good, but I don't want to neglect one portion of the sport and focus on another. But selfishly, the part of the sport that I'm focusing on is what interests me most and what I know about most. And so that's what I like to talk about. Well, and from one podcaster to another, it sells. <laughs> that's right. People love famous dogs. I mean, from the YouTube channel, you know, to the podcast, people love famous dogs and famous handlers. They really do. I mean, this podcast would not be here still if it was not for Tom Hopkins talking about Lipper. I mean, yep. Yep. That, yep. that blew this, I mean, it just overnight just skyrocketed, right. you know. Right. I, and I, I personally, I kind of try to find myself, you know, between you and Mr. Steve. Mr. Steve's podcast, mm-hmm. he kind of just does the interesting people, you know. Yep. And, and you do more of all the big name guys. And I love both of them. Yep. So, I just kind of try to do a little bit of the interesting stuff and a little bit of the big name guys, you know? So I kind of put my, try to put myself in the middle, you know? There's just like coon hunting. There's no bad houndman podcast. <laughs> you know, they're all great. I love Steve's and, you know, I love yours. I love all of them. Man, it looks great. Uh, the more content we get out there, I don't care if it's through YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, podcasting, you name it, the better off we are. You know, like I said, we can mainstream this. You know, it, it's a wonderful sport, and it's full of such unique individuals that are great to look at and to concentrate on that, you know, I think I think there's a great opportunity there. And guys like you and Steve and me and, and Chris, you know, we're just, they're trying to do it. It ain't like we're, you know, just as well as I do, it ain't like we're going to retire off this. You know, we're still going to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I got so much money put in this. I ain't no way I can make any money back. I can promise you that. Exactly. Exactly. You know, people don't realize what it's like from the outside looking in. We do it because we love sport and we're trying to promote the sport. There's no other reason. I know. I don't, I don't know you that great. You know, we've been talking here and there, you know, but I'm guessing your reasons behind your podcast are the same as mine. We just, we just want to help. Yeah. And you know, your podcast is, a lot like mine and, and how much Steve's is as far as it's not about us. No. You know, it's about the guest that's on yep. there, you know. Exactly. And to be honest with you, there's nobody that's going to sit there and listen to me talk about a dog for an hour and a half because I don't really know that much about a dog. But, yep. you know, if Joe Manning's over there talking about the world championship, people are going to listen to that, you know. Exactly. I mean, yep. that's just, I mean, it's the truth of it, and I'm, perfectly fine with that I'm, i don't have an ego and i don't i'm not arrogant enough to think the people listen to this podcast for to listen to me talk about my dog you know they just don't we need to leave the egos out of it yeah. i look at what a guy's done and what he knows and you know if if i want to go 
learn how to drive a NASCAR, I'm going to go find a NASCAR driver. If I'm going to learn how to swim, I'm going to go ask a swimmer. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask Michael Phelps how to, how to start a young dog. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we look at, they say, well, accomplishments don't mean anything or anything, but they do. You know, if I look at a guy that's consistently winning or I look at a guy that's consistently good at something and I want to learn that thing, I'm just going to go follow that guy because he obviously knows what he's doing. And, you know, it's the same way with, with anything in life, but especially coon hunting. We got to quit thinking that these guys that win all the time are doing it by some means other than they're just really good at it. <laughs> no, they, they put in the time, you know. Yes. That's what people don't realize is, is the time that's put into these dogs. Mm-hmm. It's, it's something else. And you know as much as I do, as well as I do, man, it's, it's time consuming doing these podcasts. It is. It is. It's not something you can just put together in a heartbeat. Uh, I'm lucky that I don't have to do all my editing and stuff like that. There, we got Chris to help me with that and other people, you know, Lauren and Seth and stuff. And so we got a team, you know, but a solo podcast like yours, I mean, that's hard to do. You know, I've got, I've got a team behind me with Shorty and Seth and, and Chris and all them guys. So, you know, I, I can send the raw footage to them and, you know, let them deal with it. And so it's not, yeah, I got it made. I can't complain about the podcast stuff because, uh, you know, I got a lot of guys behind me helping me and girls. Yeah. I mean, I have, you know, and, and I wouldn't be able to do this without people that have helped me either. Yeah. You know, I'm not necessarily on the, the you know, I edit it all and, and everything, but, you know, I got people that support me and people that, like Eddie Simmons. I mean, me and Mr. Eddie. Mr. Right. Eddie has helped me get people on here he if it wasn't great. for him. He's just great. Oh, man, he is just an Could outstanding – like. Yeah. Who couldn't like Eddie Simmons? No. We, if you don't like Eddie Simmons, you're a terrible human being. You That's are. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I, you know, he's from right around here. So me and him talk pretty much all, every day. You know, he's just a great individual. He really is. And still winning to this day at 62 years old. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Eddie loves yeah. coon hunting and he loves competition hunts and he loves dogs. And that's, that's what it takes. You're right. And if it wasn't for him and, you know, Chance Parker and all them helping me with this, I wouldn't be able to do it. There's no way. No, right. No, you got to have a team behind you, even if it's your wife, kids, mother, daughter, you name it. You know, you got to have you got to have a support structure. And I'm lucky in in the hounds. You know, I've got my brother who I can who I can call on as a good coon hunter. Jed is my best friend. You know, I've got people behind me in the podcast. You know, and it's great. I, I've got great friends and great family, and I'm I'm really blessed for yep. it. And that's that's awesome, man. So, if if a person could pick up one thing from your podcast, what do you wish it would be? I wish they would just understand that uh, you know we're all just folks, you know. And, and I know you look in the magazines, folks are just folks, and dogs are just dogs. You know, you look in that magazine, and I was the same way. I'd see. You talked about how you looked at Trader, and I would look at dogs like Naylor and X Junior, and I'd think, man, alive, that's crazy. You know, they must be the greatest things on the planet. And, but, you know, when I you look at Jason Doherty, who most people didn't know, and I got him on the podcast, and he told his story. When you talk about Jed used to have to steal his dad's truck to drive to UKC hunts, and and Ward, you know, would would come home and his dad would be short of cash. So he would sell the dog that Ward was hunting. And we're all just regular guys. You see us in the magazine. I know he won, he won $20,000 this week. It must be nice. He's probably getting all his bills paid. And, you know, it's just, our dogs are make mistakes and we make mistakes and we're just people. And we all came from, you know, pretty much the same place. You know, none of us were born rich. None of us were born with a silver spoon in our mouth. We, we worked hard and we struggled and these guys that I interview for these hunts are, they're just like you and me. And, you know, we need to keep that in mind whenever we look at, at them and, and we look at their dogs and we look at all that they've accomplished, you know, and it's not that we should be jealous or that they got lucky or, or, or anything like that. We should aspire to work as hard as they did to get there. And I think that's what I would like to see people understand when I have someone like a Jason Doherty, who's a national champion or like a Michael Ward who's won three trucks or something like that. Them guys worked hard to get there and they got good at their craft and now, you know, they're reaping the benefits of it. And I'm glad that you brought that up because 
you know, when I started this, I thought that too, you know, especially like back to mm-hmm. Tom Hopkins. He's the one that pops in my head the most, you know. I'm thinking, man, this guy is this polarizing figure within coon hunting, right? I mean, owned houses, Lipper, one of the most controversial dogs of all time. But he's just a regular guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, oh, yeah. And that, that was something that's kind of yep. shocked me is all these people that I've talked to, they're just regular people, you know? They're not celebrities. Yep. I mean, I guess they are within coon hunting, but not not in their minds. You know what I mean? They don't have these the, – they're not arrogant. They don't have these egos, you know? I mean – Some of them are. That's okay. Uh, too. Well, none of them that I've <laughs> talked to personally. Maybe that's maybe that's why yeah. I hadn't talked to them because they didn't mess me back. But <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> but and and, and yeah, you, know, you go back to somebody like like Mr. Eddie Simmons, whom I've heard you talk about on your podcast. How he's won, you know, been in all these casts, and he still acts like a, a kid when he's in a cast. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, people like that. Oh, yeah. uh, and that's the type of people that are in coon hunting that people don't re- or that are in competition coon hunting that they don't realize because they don't see that other side of those people. Oh no. When you see Kurt Aaron get wound up when Whitey trees a coon in a cast, just like he did 25 years ago the last time, or one time when I drew him with some old plot dog or, or black and tan dog when it treated a coon. I, it's just, and Kurt's a special case. He's wound up all the time anyway. But, you know, there's there's so many people and figures, and, you know, unless you're there and you're around them and you're friends with them, you don't know what their story is or nothing like that, so... If we can get those stories out there, I'm all for it because these are just guys. You know, they're guys that have, that are good at what they do, and I've always been a fan. I mean, I'm a Tom Brady fan. I'm a I'm a New York Yankees fan. I'm a I'm an Albert Pujols. I love greatness. You know, if you're great at something, it appeals to me because I understand the effort that it takes that I can't put in. You know, I can't put in the effort to be as good as some of these guys. You know, and and the fact that they do it and they can be so singularly focused on something and be great at it is just astounding to me. And I, I and I'm always been a fan of something like that. And we should always celebrate greatness. We shouldn't try to knock it down and knock it back and get it back to our level. We should celebrate dogs like Meltdown or dogs like Z or Ruby or things that, that they just do amazing things or country. You know, that we shouldn't try to knock them down onto our level. You know, we ought to appreciate the greatness and we ought to appreciate you know, what we got in front of us instead of trying to, trying to berate it. You know, like you said, even if you're not a fan of Tom Brady, you should appreciate the greatness. If you're not a fan of Meltdown or whoever, you should appreciate it. Yeah, exactly. I don't see why you preach, why you're a Yankees fan. If you appreciate greatness though. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a, I'm a Yankees fan because not so much now, but when George Steinbrenner would do anything to win a world championship, I'm not a Yankees fan as much yeah. as I was a Steinbrenner fan. I'm I'm a Cardinals fan. I okay. like the St. Louis okay. Cardinals. That's a little better. But but uh, yeah. But as far as like greatness, you know, man, when Steinbrenner just said just just whatever it would take, yeah. I appreciated that for sure. So, Josh, who's had the greatest impact on your hunting career, and why? Um, as far as the career. I got to say Jed, I got I mean, I hate giving Jed much credit because we're such good friends and speaking of ego, gee whiz, that guy got one, but, uh, I love him. He's my brother. You know, he's my best friend. And if I need help, I know he's going to be there, but he's had the greatest. Cause if it wasn't for Jed, I wouldn't been it, you know, these pro classics or I wouldn't have some of these dogs to handle. And don't get me wrong. I raise good dogs too. I do. But I don't have the opportunity to take one of these dogs. And, and Jed, when Duds was a three-year-old or a four-year-old, he hadn't won nothing. You know, this was a behind-the-barn coon dog that hadn't been to any hunts. And Jed bought half of him, you know, under a tree one night and bred one of the winningest females at the time to him, you know, that hadn't won a thing and allowed me to get con and allowed me to do some of the things, you know, so I got to thank Jed as far as the coon hunting part of it, the competition side of it. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be doing this podcast. You know, I wouldn't have won, you know, all the pro classics that I was cast in the pro classics that I won. I wouldn't have been at the world hunt. I wouldn't have, have done these things probably if it wasn't for him. And then, uh, I got to thank my brother too, because 
I don't know if you've got a brother, but when he's good at something, I want to be better. And so Jeremy took a dog's, he's taken, had great dogs. I wanted better dogs. And so we don't, you know, we love each other and we don't hunt very often together or nothing like that, but we, we compete against each other like brothers do. And so, you know, those are probably the two influences as far as, as coon hunting goes that have impacted me the most. It's the competitive streak with my brother and, you know, wanting to be better than him and, and, you know, the help from Jed to allow me to do it really. Yeah. And that, that's awesome. You know, you know, a lot like me, as far as coming up, you know, I mean, I, I've done come to the realization that due to my job, you know, I'm probably never going to be able to own a great coon dog by myself because I'm gone for two weeks out of the month. Yep. So, yep. And, and people, I don't know about you, but I know me, like I don't have, yeah, you know, I make good money. My wife makes good money, but we, I don't have the financial to pay six, $500 for an entry, you know? And you talking about, right. Yeah. Well, I don't, either. and you talking about having somebody to do that. I mean, that's a huge impact, you know? And a lot of people, they, they misconstrue that as, oh, he's got a backer. Or, oh, he's just got a money. Man. Well, I'll tell you what, those guys like Jed or Ike Rainey or John Strickland or Ashley Guthrie or Ashley Oxendine, they're not paying $6,500 entries and giving their dog mm-hmm. to just anybody. you got to be good at what you're doing. You know, I don't think I'm a great handler. I don't think I'm, but I know, I know dogs. And I know what dogs I can win with and I know how they operate. And, and I like to think that I know how maybe, you know, and I get humbled sometimes just like everybody does and everybody should. But, uh, you know, usually you give me a pretty good dog. I'm going to win my fair share. Uh, I'm not going to make a a bunch of mistakes with them. Uh, I know what kind of takes that I want to win with. And and Jed had those. And so kudos to him for seeing that, and I've gave him some success and I've gave him some, some failures, but I mean, you know, those guys, if you, if you're really good, here's one thing I wanted to express. And I try to express it on, on my show as well is if you're really good and you put forth the effort, someone's going to see it, you know, someone's going to notice that and someone's going to give you the opportunities that I've got and that, that other people have got because they see that you're a good dog man and you're a good handler and you love the sport and you know what you're doing they're going to see it. And so my advice is always just put in the effort and don't get bitter and, and keep your head down. Cause there's going to be a lot of times that you you think you failed and you didn't, you know, it just hasn't happened yet. And so, you know, I, a lot of credit is given to the guys that back these handlers and that back and pay their bills and do things. But a lot of credit is given to the handlers too, because if they weren't good at it, they wouldn't have that opportunity in the first place. Yeah. What you just said, that doesn't go for just coon hunting. That goes for life. The cream always rises to the top. Exactly. That is one thing exactly. that I've found my whole life. No matter what, the cream is always going to rise to the top. The best are always going to be noticed. Whether they, they And they don't have to get out there and, and voice it, you know? No, no. You don't have to be on Facebook talking about nope. how good your dog is. If you take some hunts, someone's going to notice that without yep. you saying a word. So, Josh... What is the truth behind Josh Michaelis? Uh, I don't know. I'm brutally honest. Uh, if I don't like your dog, I'm going to tell you. If I don't like you, I'm probably going to tell you. And I think that translates well to some people, and it doesn't translate to others. The truth is that we're all just regular people, me included. You know, I live in a normal place. I have normal money. I have normal work ethic and normal dogs, and we're just, you know, I got a couple kids that I wonder if they're normal sometimes, but I think they are. And so, you know, it's just people think because we have a platform or because we're in a situation or because we're at a hunt that that they can't afford to go to or something that we're something different than them and we're not. And so I just want to express that the truth is your dog's probably not as good as you think it is, and I'm just a regular guy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's awesome yeah well my name's good as i think it is i might as well take him sell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right and some people some people like me and you and darty you know sometimes we we look at the bad more than we do the good but that's just part of it and i think those people have better dogs you know i really yeah. do well i look at mine sometimes and i just think man I, I wonder if everybody else is doing the same thing i am right now because that if they ain't this ain't no fun yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And sometimes no, it ain't fun. And you know just as well as I do that there's there's days and there's weeks and there's months where it's no, just not fun. It isn't. I mean, 
you know, if you want to, if you want to get to a certain point, you got to grind yeah. through it. And kudos to the people that do go have fun every night, you know, and that's part of it. Yeah. Are Are you jealous of yes, them? Like I, I am. am. Like you see them guys with a couple, four or five red bones and one coon that they finally treat in six hours, you know, and they think, oh, we had a great hunt tonight. Yeah, and they're all excited. I, I, and it's. And I'm thinking, man, them guys have. I hope they never competition because yep. they got. You're paid. right. They really do. They're just enjoy. Yeah, they're just enjoying the sport and their dogs and. You know what? I, I may go out and and tree eight or nine coons in a row, and the dog looks fantastic, and then he does something completely ridiculous, and I'm that's what I stew on, you know, and that's what I focus on. And so yeah, I mean, some of them, I'm jealous of some of them pleasure hunters. I really yep. am. Man, Josh, I do. I can't thank you enough for coming on here, man. I think it's gonna be awesome. I know people are gonna love it. I enjoyed it. I, I did too. I enjoyed it, it. It's awesome, and I I think people's gonna like seeing. Are here in this side, you know, you on the other side. I know you've been on Houndsman XP a couple of times, but I, I think it's awesome. Yeah. So, anything else you'd like to add before we sign off, or anyone you like to shout out, or anything like that? I uh, no. I just, I mean, I thank you for even. I'm humbled. You know, people don't understand that. You know, you know, when I call a a, a guy that I've idolized that has has done a lot of winning or something like that, and they're excited to be on my podcast, I'm just like, wow. You know, that's crazy. People don't understand that, you know, we're all just, we're just as excited to be recognized as, as anybody else, you know, and it, just like some guy that has a good coon dog and you, and you say, man, that's a nice dog. You get that feeling, you know, and it's the same way for everybody. I mean, I'm excited and, and humbled that you asked me, you know, it's just, it's cool that, that we're out there and we have this platform and, you know, like I said, we're all just people and I'm, I'm happy to be on here just like you're happy to have me. Yep, and I think it's awesome, and like you you said, it it really, it really is awesome when you ask someone to be on your podcast or whatever, and they do, they say, "Man, I'd be honored to do it." And you're like, "Honored?" Yeah, you know, you're honored oh, to be. Yeah. I mean, it's like, man. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you idolize these people, and they say you're they're honored to be on your podcast. Like Joe Manning, right. that was he's real humble. He was real humble when I asked him, and I was like, "Man, you just won a world championship, and you're honored to be." You know? Yep. I remember when we done we the YouTube channel had done the head to head with Lane Denny and Kevin Cable, and it was Lane's idea. And I thought Kevin's never going to do that. Man, he's out here with Bank. He's just coming off a world hunt. It, it, this ain't going to pay him nothing. You know, I'll pay his gas, but that's it. I'm thinking Kevin's never going to do that. He's never going to go for it. I'm surprised Lane even wanted to do it either. And Kevin never even missed a beat. You bet. Be out there whenever. And I thought, wow, you know, that that is something. You know, here I am with two world champions and two guys that meet me at my house to hunt with them. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that was kind of the beginning of, you know, these guys, you know, they're they're just people. And you are absolutely correct. And I'm glad that you that you brought that up. I mean, that's yep. awesome. But Josh, I do thank you for coming on here, man. I thank you for your time. I know you're busy. And hey, I I appreciate you having me. Like I said, just like Joe, I'm humbled. Oh yeah, <laughs> I hear you. Well, I'm humbled to be able to do it, and it's been an honor. It really has. And I'm a fan of the truth. And a lot of my listeners are fans of the truth too. Because when you drop a big episode and they enjoy it, they text me and tell me about yep. it which I've already heard it because I listened to him, you know, first thing. But right. I do appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for coming on here. Hey, I appreciate you having me. And, hey, you're doing a great job, too. Keep doing what you're doing. I enjoy your episodes just as much as you enjoy mine. Yes, sir. Well, you're doing an outstanding job as well. Thank you, buddy. I'll holler at you later. All right. Thanks, All right, guys. Bye. I really hope y'all enjoyed that interview as much as I did. If you like what you heard here, go on over to Facebook. Give us a like, at Coon Hunting U. Also, go to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating and a review. It really helps us out. And remember, if you need a new hunting light, do not overlook Superior. They make an awesome light, best customer service in the business. Man, their walking light and double red is the brightest I've ever seen. Use coupon code CHU Podcast at checkout at nighthunters.com. You can find the link in the description box below this. Coon Hunting University is a product of Audio Hound Productions. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful day.